my brothers and my sisters, we are confronted in each of our lifetime with sickness and with death, with the confusion that comes from that, with the hurt that comes from close ones that go through that, even the personal suffering and struggle, the questions that we have if we ourselves personally are moving through sickness or even heading towards death. And it leaves us always feeling as if we can be lacking, as if we are a bit incomplete, if, as if we are poor. And today is a very specific message, and the first message particularly that come to us in the readings is, is that God knows, approaches, wants to touch, wants to heal, wants to be our understanding, wants to be able to, be able to help us rise from anything that we have in front of us. Now I think that if we go back to the Book of Wisdom, I think sometimes in the Old Testament, uh, we may think that there's some things that are out of touch. But in all wisdom literature, so in this genre of literature in the Old Testament, the Book of Wisdom, the Book of Sirach, Pro, uh, Proverbs, Psalms, uh, Samuel, all these other people, uh, and these books, it's not about some high theological idea. Everything that are in these books are about very basic human experiences. Sorrow, death, sickness, confusion, love, friendship. These very basic, everyday, very human experiences. And in the first reading, the writer even says, God has made creation to be good for us, has made creation good, and it wipes out the question of whether God is the God of creation or if creation has power over God. For example, when I was in the seminary, I was assigned to a parish on the west side of Cleveland. And there was a, a wonderful married couple I had gotten to know, whose names were Ed and Marilyn. And Marilyn struggled with several years with a cancer that had begun to grow and had gotten out of control of what her doctors could do for her. The parish prayed, the pastor called together people to pray for Marilyn. She was anointed. She goes in for one of her checkups every two months. And at that very time with the results, the doctor said to her, I can't find anything. I can't find anything, and I can't explain this. I can't find anything, I don't know what's happened. All of your scans for the last couple years have shown that there has been cancer inside of you, it's been worsening, I can't find anything. Now that was a great moment of joy for the parish. And Marilyn was very grateful. Ed, in fact, Ed told me that story shortly after it happened. And he cried tears of joy, tears of gratitude. I think for us, we see the patterns within our lives and the frequency where we do have some suffering. We, we don't have the control that we would like to have. And we wonder if God is there, if God knows, if God just allows creation to have its way with us. God is the God of creation. God is the God of creation for our good, mysterious and difficult to live within, but for our good. If we look in the gospel, what is Jesus' personal take with sickness and death? By the way, in the gospel, we have an example of both sickness and death. We have a young girl approached by Jesus, her father approaches, not even somebody who's of the faith, she is close to death. Come lay your hands on her. Please heal her. He trusts that he will do that, that he can meet death or close to death with some kind of healing power. And Mark, for some reason, then builds this other shorter story of the woman who is bleeding, hemorrhaging, a moment of sickness. By the way, both women, which for us show his attentiveness to all people of society, and what's interesting, and Mark, we believe, does this intentionally, he begins the story of death, and then he interrupts that story using in Scripture what we call a sandwich technique. And he brings this story in between of this woman hemorrhaging, and he does not ignore her. 
He does not ignore. He doesn't have to save time to go to Jairus' daughter. He is in control of all things. He approaches and says that he will go visit the daughter. He is met by the woman who is bleeding, who just reaches out and touches him, the southern moment of touch. And he is pleased and says, your faith has healed you. And then he goes and he offers life to Jairus' daughter, who they had believed was already dead. It is interesting that they ridiculed him when they thought that she was still dead even though he said she was alive. It is very interesting how Jesus, who always promotes life, gets ridiculed for promoting life. Sometimes interesting how as a church we get the same thing. A very unique part of the story, and actually a, a friend of mine was pointing this out to me. What is unique about the young girl, the daughter of Jairus, and what's unique about the woman who had been bleeding, suffering? The number 12 comes to mind. So the young girl is 12. Why is that important? At that age and in that society, she was becoming ready to get married within a few years. The woman who had been bleeding, suffering, was bleeding for a significant amount of time, probably unable to have children during that time. And there's this whole sense of the inability to have life or to bear life that is in the lives of these two women. And here's where I think our sense of Jesus' healing can fall short. If we believe that Jesus does want to heal us, wants to forgive, wants to give us mercy, wants to restore us, all that is great, it's true, we believe it. But if we also believe that Jesus wants to restore us because he believes that goodness will come from us in the future, I think that's the other half of Jesus' healing. Not only does he want to restore us, and yes, there are mysterious moments when he does not, but when Jesus restores us, or when he works with us despite our suffering or in our death, he does so so that the future good that can come from us may happen. I think it'd be fair to say that Jairus' daughter went on to live a life afterwards. I think it'd be fair to conclude that the woman who was healed went on to live a life afterwards, both of which neither would have had without Jesus' touch. Marilyn went on to live for a number of years after, sharing life with Ed that she had not had before. Jesus' healing allows future good and future growth and fruit to come from us. He wants that to happen. That brings us to an interesting question. Within our lives, and I'd like for us to think specifically of the lifelong commitments we have made. Think of our marriages. Think how some of us have made commitments to society, to friends, to family. Have there been moments when we have been graced, where we have been healed, where suffering has been mended or sins have been forgiven that have allowed us to serve, to bear life, to give fruit, to love other people, which with our original condition would never have been possible. What has come that we never thought would have been possible if we would have been stuck? Jesus does more than just heal. He comes to get us unstuck so that we can live life in the time to come. I believe that in our lives that happens all the time. Whether we are already in a marriage, whether already ordained as a priest, whether we're thinking of living religious life, and if we think about these things, if we think about marriage, and there's so many young people here, this is good for our young people to think about. How will you live? How do you want to love? 
And if you want to love and to be married, if you want to love and be a sister, to be a religious brother, if you want to love and be a priest or love and be single, God is already working to move you past, to move you through, to move us past, to move us through the moments that we may otherwise suffer with questions, that we may get stuck in sin, sorrow, difficulty. Jesus heals because he is the God over nature. Jesus heals to set us up to be able to give in new ways. It's a pretty remarkable thing. Our God just doesn't set us in motion and then walk away and say, hey, good luck, keep warm and well fed. Our God begins us, sets us in motion, helps us through the pitfalls, and says, I believe that even in the time to come, you will give life and fruit and love, and you will bear great things because I have helped you through what otherwise might have gotten you stuck. Today, we might be in the midst of one of those moments. We may have experienced, I know that I have experienced moments like that. Christ moves us through so as to set us up for new love and commitment. Our God is a God that pays attention to every sickness and every death and does not let one of them slide by and wants to set us up for future loving and does not back away from supporting life in all cases, even when ridiculed. We are a people this weekend that are encouraged that God will find a way to use us and to love us and to supply for us, where otherwise we may suffer for a number of years with our own efforts. Let us pray. Trust that God will make a response and help us, help us through, see us through to great fruit. Amen.